How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, um, I'm just giving the royal family a reminder. Mercury is still in retrograde. We are still in the nucleus of it. And I said that I am fully committed to letting the royal family know so you don't lose sight. Now, one of the things that um, I've been um, pointing out to the royal family that I notice is that um, we have major power outages out of nowhere and people can't explain it. Another one that's new to me, but I've been paying very close attention to, uh, anywhere around the world, every retrograde, there is a bridge collapse. It could be a bridge for cars or even a bridge of a walkway. Very interesting. Um, and, um, and one of the things that I have pointed out to the royal family is that um, if all, if you can, it's not good to take long distance trips during retrograde. It seems that something always go wrong. When I play these videos, I want y'all to play real close attention to language and numbers. Thanks for joining us. We are following several developing stories tonight, but we begin at Marquette, where power went out in several buildings for the second time in the past couple of days. Lauren Linder is live at the university with what we're learning tonight. Lauren. Katie, a spokesperson for We Energies tells me the outage had to do with a problem with one of the underground cables, but as you can see, the power is back up and running. Taking a walk through Marquette's campus at about 6 tonight, you found buildings in darkness contrasting with those lit up. Students got alerts that several buildings lost power on campus and police dispatch was down. It impacted three buildings in the area by 17th and Wisconsin for a couple hours, including dorms and the commons, the dining hall that offers food 24-7. When I was coming back uh, to the dorm, there were a few kids that were stuck in the elevators. I know that was an issue, but they got out. Well, as we drove up Wisconsin Avenue, I saw the, uh, uh, the flashing lights. I, I said there's some police activity outside my building. Vice President of Mission and Ministry, Father Fred Zagone, was heading back from dinner when he noticed his residence had no power, something he also experienced just a couple of days ago in a different campus building. Last Thursday during the Marquette game when the power went out, we didn't lose power here, but I was down at the Jesuit residence and uh, we lost power about with about five minutes left on the clock. That was the concern for many students. It's really inconvenient because I can't watch March Madness and the Michigan game's on and I need to know if my bracket's doing well. Well, all the students can be watching March Madness again with the power back on. We Energies tells me that the incident from Thursday only affected two buildings on campus and that that had to do with a different underground cable. They're still investigating both of the outages. Reporting live at Marquette, Lauren Linter, today's TMJ4. Um, the reason why, if anybody asks, well, why does the power go out? Well, remember that Mercury is the closest planet to us, and um, what is being felt is the magnetic forces. That's why the cell phones mess up. That's why the computers mess up. And they can never come up with an answer when they have these power outages. They can never, unquote, find the source. They just simply can't. So now we're going to go in a whole different direction. We're going to go across the world. And this was over a week ago. And this is about a bridge collapsing, a uh, walkway bridge. But it's major. Foot over bridge has collapsed in Mumbai, this time outside the CST, the famed CST station. It's a foot over bridge that was connecting platform one, we are told, to the BT lane. And it runs right by the Times of India's office, the iconic building there that houses the Times of India. This is the same bridge that was once used by terrorists to cross into the CST station during the 26-11 attacks. The basic information we are getting tonight, viewers, is that a section of this bridge has fallen through. And at a very, very packed our it fell upon commuters as they were crossing the bridge and some that were under the bridge 
The visuals that you're seeing on your screen are from moments after the incident, and you can see there's a massive gap in the bridge, and that's the section that is caved in. Now, this is not the first time in the last two and a half, three years that these foot over bridges have collapsed. This is, in fact, the third or fourth time that an incident like this is happening with the entire floor of this foot over bridge, at least a 20 foot expanse of that particular bridge coming down. It must have taken down quite a few people. There you can see it in those pictures, but there's a very good still photograph that I would like uh, our viewers to see. Uh, and then you can see that gap, which is yawning, open, gaping gap uh, through which people have fallen. And of course, the concrete uh, and the steel superstructure would have also, the beams would have also collapsed onto cars that were passing underneath. Let's go full frame to these pictures because you can see rescue efforts also being mounted there. Uh, we don't still know if people are continued to be trapped under the debris, but what we can tell you is that several people are injured and have been rushed to a local hospital, the St. George's Hospital, and we're also being told that there might be, in fact, fatalities. We're going to try and put a picture on that, I get a number for you. It's uh, very, very distressing to see. There, there you can see that gap. It's about 20 feet long, viewers. That's where uh, some of the people who were on this bridge fell through. We are being told as many as 30 might actually be injured. And when the debris fell onto commuters that were passing from under this bridge, uh, obviously some of them would have been squashed under that debris. This was a very, very busy time. We're told this happened around uh, a quarter past seven, perhaps even uh, 7 30 ish. And we got visuals and we put the story out for you viewers to see. But uh, this is not the first time this is happening. Uh, Wait, so those feminine deodorant washes and wipes? So if you check in my archives, you will see that I have um, other videos, even from last year, of uh, something always happening around a bridge. And I was trying to figure out well, what does that have to do with retrograde and uh, Brenda? Johnson said, well, it's a bridge to communication, and when that bridge is broke down, then you can't get across to communicate. And I said, okay, I, I, I can take that, because um, doing retrograde, um, communication becomes a big issue. People argue. Um, it can be bad. And based on my last research, they said six had passed and 32 um, were injured over that bridge. So as we continue on, my royal family, we're going to talk about another power outage that happened two days ago. And on top of the power outage, it affected people's flight delays. I'm doing retrograde, going back to traveling. And this is something that I've also noticed too, that doing retrograde the flights are delayed majorly, and then there's a power outage. I remember, I think last year, um, don't hold me to it, it's somewhere in my archives, they had a big major one um, down south. And I mean, it was major. Stuff was out for a minute. So let's listen to this and pay attention to language on this one. Very, very crucial. On at the Albuquerque Sunport, a power outage left many travelers stuck in the dark this morning, unable to catch their flights. Casey Torres is here with more on the frustrating morning for flyers and what caused that power outage. Casey. Well, Kai, Sunport officials tell us a little over 30 flights were either canceled or delayed. But we talked to some travelers, and surprisingly, they weren't too upset about it. It's all back to business as usual at the Sunport. People are checking in and getting ready for liftoff. But around 3.30 this morning, parts of the city and the entire airport were left in the dark. Well, unfortunately, these things happen at times. It was uh, multiple power outages that involved multiple transformers. And so, unfortunately, it was just uh, some bad timing for the folks traveling today. <laughs> Turns out PNM found an underground line that was faulty. The airport's backup generators didn't do much backing up. Yes, there are backup generators. Unfortunately, those had issues as well. Um, and so, you know, it was uh, an unfortunate situation where we, we, it took a little bit of time to get back up and going. It took PNM crews close to five hours to restore power. Travelers were finally allowed to get through TSA. Even then, some flights were still delayed or canceled. 
That's a little frustrating having to wait in line for this long, but it's good to see that everyone's working hard. <laughs> well, we did miss the flight, too. That's <laughs> kind of a big delay, but yeah, no harm, no foul. Other travelers took to Twitter saying they didn't know what was going on, but Sunport officials say they did their best to inform travelers on social media. You know, hopefully we can um, create a plan to uh, prevent this from happening again. Sunport is not handling flight rescheduling or reimbursements. We're told travelers need to contact their airlines. Okay. Somebody had put something on their Twitter, and I seen the word chaos. And that is something that I talk about often doing retrograde. Expect chaos. Expect delays. That's why I keep emphasizing to the royal family, you're going to have to break your regular routine and leave much earlier. Uh, two weeks ago when I went to the doctor, there was a major five-car accident. And thank goodness that I followed my own advice and left the house 45 minutes earlier um, to get to the doctor on time. I cannot emphasize it. So the last one I'm going to show, a lot of people know about it, um, but um, I had to show it. You know, I got to always do that little true royal stuff that I do over here when I'm getting my little kicks and stuff. And in Norway, um, they had a major, um, let's see, emergency services airlifted 1,300 people from a cruise um, ship at risk being um, um, grounded off the rocky Norwegian coast. The Viking Sky sent a mayday um, call after it encountered engine problems and bad weather. So you got the power uh, went completely out uh, on those engines, just junk, zonked, went completely out. Then they're traveling long distance and stuff. And the other part that I wanted to add is that, um, and I learned this through Linus, that our father never intended for us to have skyscrapers and huge buildings that reach, you know, damn near, you know, pa yeah, past the clouds. And, um, and the way I was looking at this uh, cruise ship, was nothing more than man's greed. I mean, these ships are enormous, enormous. And it shows you that the divine hand is in full effect. It doesn't matter, matter how big it is, but it's also, I just look at the greed of it. Because, you know, when they make those big ships, they're looking at how many passengers they can get on there, how much money they can make. And this was no joke. And we see who's out there traveling. So let's check this out a little bit. It was meant to be a relaxing cruise. But passengers on the Viking Sky say it ended in a terrifying ordeal. All right, let's have to abdicate the area. The ship suffered engine failure in stormy conditions off Norway's west coast on Saturday afternoon. As it drifted towards rocky ground, the captain sent out a mayday signal. It's clear that it's a serious situation when a cruise ship with over 1,300 passengers is in one of Northern Europe's worst waters. They've managed to anchor the boat, so it's lying at rest. They've also managed to start one engine. There are four engines on board, and now they want to start more, so they can move themselves. Strong winds and waves up to eight meters high caused windows to break and water to flow in. The passengers, mostly from the United States and the United Kingdom, were told to put on life jackets and wait for help. The bad weather meant rescuers were unable to use lifeboats to take them ashore. So helicopters were sent to winch them one by one to safety. The Viking Sky was more than halfway through a 12-day trip around Norway and was scheduled to arrive in Britain on Tuesday. It's a trip passengers say they'll never forget, but for all the wrong reasons. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to respect um, our father, because our father is running all of this. And I just wanted to show a few little clippings to the royal family. The retrograde is in full effect. I'm not saying to fear it, just to be aware of it. And you can utilize it in your favor. This is a really good time to do some spring cleaning. This is a really good time if someone owe you some money in the past to see 
they're gonna cough up your coins um, and just it's all about preparing um, I would strongly suggest not to get any dental work or any major operations you can reschedule that stuff because these doctors are just on you because they worried about their bottom line and um, I can't emphasize it enough because I have a lot of emails where people did not listen to me did it anyway and it did not turn out right even people in my own family so I'm just going to continue to do my due diligence for the royal family to let them know retrograde is in full effect so anyway my royal family render your voice with your beautiful divine words and as always my royal family I thank you for your love I thank you for your support and with that said Ashe.